Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, I thought I would share some photo books that I'm currently really interested in with the hopes that it might help some of you out with inspiration, or maybe you are looking for some photographers that you want to look into in a bit more detail. As I'm sure you've heard a lot before, photography books are often seen as one of the best ways to look at photography projects, and my opinion is no different. So there are lots of these videos out on YouTube, but I think that there can never be too many as new books are always coming out and it's always good to give attention to them as you can learn a lot from them. So there's a few books I'm going to talk about today. Some are from more contemporary famous photographers and some are lesser known, but they're all equally just as interesting. So I'm just going to flick through each book and share some ideas and themes that I think each book is trying to explore and talk about some of the paper and printing details as well as how they've laid each image out. I'm not going to go super in depth and break down every single image as I think that photo books are such a personal thing and I really wouldn't want to take that experience away from someone who just picked up these books and I think that by me telling them what they should look out for and what they should know does ruin that somewhat. So the books I'm talking about today are all documentary focused but in the future I would definitely love to explore a lot more fashion and landscape and maybe some fine art books as well so if you have any recommendations then feel free to leave a comment down below. I will also leave a few links in the description if you want to buy these books or look at them in a bit more detail as well, so be sure to check them out. So on to the first book now, which is Message from the Exterior, and that's by Mark Rewardell. So this project, shot in 2003, is a collection of portraits documenting abandoned houses in the desert surrounding Los Angeles. There are 77 black and white images, all with a very similar tone, composition and subject matter, therefore making it a typology project. So as I flip through these, you might notice that most of the houses look destroyed and run down, representing a sense of abandonment, which was a theme that Ruedel wants to explore. I think with typology projects such as this one, they can take a while to get into because they are so repetitive and initially some people will struggle consuming this type of photography, but once you get lost in the pages, you definitely find appreciation for this kind of work. Even when you think about making something like this, just having to go out into the desert and make very similar images each time is such a challenge and is no easy task. So while I keep flicking through, you may notice that the layout is often just a single image on the right hand side with no text or page numbers whatsoever. And this was obviously intentional and I think it was a great call keeping the book as minimal as possible. Especially because the main theme is abandonment, it makes sense that there's only one thing on the page. I was expecting some kind of caption like a lot of photo books have, but he's actually placed a list of all the titles at the end of the book, which I'll get into in a second. So at this stage, all the images have been shot in really harsh lighting during the day, but if I jump to around halfway in the book, you'll notice that the images are now almost backlit, creating some really interesting silhouettes. And as much as I love the high key images, I'm more drawn to these more dimly lit ones, possibly due to the fact that they are a little bit more grungy looking, and you can really start to see that film grain appear across the image. So in terms of paper, I can't say for certain, but it definitely has a luster finish to it, which really brings out the contrast of the black and white prints, giving it a really high quality feel. The paper also doesn't feel too thick, which makes sense because there are a lot of pages, so it would be quite costly if they were all inkjet, for example. So at the end here, we have a few notes, which I won't get into, but it's still a really interesting read. I think the idea of fill notes, as it's called here, is always so useful in order to consume the project in full and how it was intended. And then we have the titles and their location as well, which is a really cool way to index each image. And finally, a little project statement at the back of the book here, just to wrap it all up and give you the project a little more context. Now onto the next book, which is very different to some of the other books I have today, and that is 45 by Damien Heinisch. So the photographer has actually already made a video covering this book, so I would definitely recommend checking that one out as he goes into a lot more detail than I will, and it's really important if you want to understand his positioning and where he's coming from. So this project is a collection of almost 200 images, all shot on 35mm, that documents a train journey throughout modern day Europe, from Oslo all the way down to the eastern Ukraine. It draws inspiration from his relatives' own train journeys in the 20th century, which led to a new life or death as a result of forced immigration. So the title 45 refers to the age of all three family members, including himself, when making such journeys. His grandfather in World War II was taken to a labor camp, his father in 1978 left Poland for West Germany due to political unemployment and Heinisch himself also made this project at age 45. So firstly, as you can see, each image is really cropped in, which is quite different as cropping too much will give you a ton of grain due to the lack of detail. But when it's intentional like it is here, it works so well in developing its own aesthetic and gives this book such a unique feel. Sometimes it is hard to see exactly what's going on, but I actually like that as you have to take a little bit more time to fully consume each photo. Each image is also printed edge to edge, which is also known as a full bleed print, which I believe creates consistency from page to page. 
The book is also sequential, so the images on each spread work very well next to each other, even though they are miles apart location-wise. Even the paper choice is quite different to most other photo books. It's quite thin and almost feels like photocopy paper, which I guess you could assume might be a cheaper option, but it works so well with these high contrast images. So with that said, it's obviously a matte print, which has a really nice feel to it and just gives the book something extra on top of the already incredible photos. You may also notice that it is Japanese bound, so it's almost in reverse compared to how other photo books are, which is a really interesting presentation method and something I haven't seen a whole lot before. It gives the book quite a bit of texture, and this might sound a little bit stupid, but it's quite airy when you flick through the pages. What's also cool is because it's bound in this way, on the edge of the book, you get a tiny bit of the image, so when it's sitting on your shelf, you get this really interesting pattern compared to just white pages like other photo books out there. And at the end here, you have some diary entries from his grandfather that were actually all written on a calendar, hence why they're listed Monday through to Sunday. And then you have the stories of his father's journey, however, I believe they are written by Heinrich himself, they still offer a very interesting insight into another difficult journey. And then finally, you have Damien's own story about this project, which wraps things up, almost acting as a third piece of the puzzle. This also resembles a project statement of some kind, giving the book a lot of context and meaning, allowing you to understand the themes in a bit more detail. So as I said before, Damien Heinish already has a video covering this book, so I would highly recommend checking that one out because I think it gives a better idea of exactly what he was trying to explore. On to the next book now, which you may have heard of, and that is A1, The Great North Road by Paul Graham. So this book documents the people and places along the Great North Road, which runs from London all the way up to Edinburgh. Over the span of two years, in 1981 and 82, Paul Graham has created 40 coloured images, giving an insight into the landscape and lives along this road, which has become quite famous contemporary British photography. This book was actually one of the first colour books in Britain alongside the work of Martin Parr, so initially Paul Graham actually had to self-publish this book himself. According to the new publisher, Mac, this social documentary of the UK mixed with the new colour format transformed British contemporary photography in the 1980s, inspiring many photographers in the years to come. As a social documentary project, there is a mix of environmental portraits and landscapes giving scope to each area that Graham visits, which makes it all the more interesting considering this book was almost 40 years ago. As a social documentary project, there is a mix of environmental portraits and landscapes giving scope to each area that Graham visits, which makes it all the more interesting considering this book was made almost 40 years ago. In particular, the fashion and the cars all feel very different to today, but there still is a sense of familiarity, possibly due to the fact that other photographers, such as Martin Parr, have also made similar bodies of work. So as I flip through, you may notice just how important colour is in this book, in particular the use of red and blue, which adds another level of storytelling. It's also shot entirely on large format, so the detail and depth of field in some of these is quite incredible and works so well in terms of scale in relation to the size of the book. In terms of layout, I really just love how simple it is. You have one image on the right hand side and a little caption on the left, giving some information about the location and when it was shot. It's not necessarily displayed in chronological order, but it's interesting seeing where each of these images were made and at the end of the book, there is a little map which gives a lot more context to this project, especially if you aren't familiar with the locations. In terms of paper, it definitely feels like an inkjet print or something close to that, which has become quite common in these large format type projects. I think because colour is such an important part of this work, having a premium stock such as this one is quite crucial to the presentation and ensuring there's as much colour detail as possible. So at the back here, we have a little map with all the towns running along the Great North Road, which shows the scale of just how big this project was. And on the right hand side, there's some information about the history of the road and what it looks like at the time of this book being made. And finally, Paul Graham has included quite a lengthy anecdote, sharing his thoughts and processes towards his project, as well as more personal moments about his own connection to the road. So those are a few books I'm currently interested in and I'm really keen to explore the work of all these photographers a lot more in the coming months. I hope that if you hadn't come across any of these photographers before, you might have learned a thing or two and it's kind of given you a bit of inspiration to delve a little bit deeper into the works of these artists. And maybe if you are familiar with these photographers, then I'm sure you can agree that all their work is very influential and it's so important to contemporary documentary photography. So as I said at the start of this video, I definitely would love to do more of these types of videos where I pick an area of photography like fashion or landscapes and kind of do a similar thing where I flick through and share some overall thoughts and ideas. So if that's something you want to see more of, then definitely let me know down in the comments below. But for now, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.